It's a week to opening day uh, for CBU baseball, and on a Wednesday afternoon, I get to spend some time with the skipper, Gary Adcock. Uh, Coach, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's always my pleasure. It's always uh, enjoy talking Lancer baseball and baseball in general. All right. We're going to go ahead and dive into a preview of the 2022 campaign. So we'll go back to the first year of the transition. In 2019, I remember that on social media, the slogan being, make them know. Two whack regular season titles and the two completed campaigns. People got to know about Lancer baseball, right? Completing this transition. Well, well, you would you would think so, um, but I still think there's work to be done in that avenue. I mean, um, you know the the yes, we we've, we've won more games than anybody in the conference in the last two years. We track that. We use it in recruiting. You know, we had the leading batting average in the league last year and the leading ERA. So like, we are so proud of our accomplishments. You would think that, but uh, we're still the new guy on the block. You know, we're still not predicted to win the league again. And, you know, I think they're picking us third, it seems, in the poll. So um, that's okay. You know, I, uh, I like being the, the one that people aren't talking about and thinking about. It helps keep us motivated and going through. And I think maybe till we get through this transition, we're just going to have to keep doing it every year and, until finally somebody uh, other than our immediate fans stand up and say, hey, that's a pretty good program. <laughs> um, has this, you know, the start in Division One changed the kind of kids you had access to on the recruiting trail that you otherwise maybe wouldn't? Uh, yes and no. I do think we've gotten a lot bigger physically, um, and we've gotten a little bit faster and a little bit stronger. So, you know, one of the things we targeted in recruiting was, to, to get our athleticism a little bit up in Division One, but you know we're still recruiting the same kid. We go out and we have a we have a system that we look for a, a particular pitcher and a mold that we look for and position players. And while we might be getting into some some more homes, um, it's you know we have a lot of really good Division Two players that would have been great Division One players. So recruiting hasn't changed as much as you think. Okay, so. WAC play is going to get here real quick. You got seven games before that uh, GCU series to start out. Um, that's a tough test to start out with with just that few n number of games. How hard is it to settle some of these roster battles that you're having with so few preseason games? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I haven't hid the fact I'm not a fan uh, of starting league that soon, um, especially when you're, you know, you're losing about. I think we have 64 percent of our innings gone and the middle of our order gone. So it does present a problem with who do you go to in the seventh inning? Do you have enough uh, games under your belt to know what your starting pitcher should be on a Friday night? Um, but you know what? Grand Canyon's in that same dilemma. So, you know, we, we can't control that. Um, all we can do is try to prepare for that. But it has made a very, very competitive practice session. The amount of jobs and innings open. And, and I've got some new ideas that I'm going to roll out in those first seven games I've never done before in terms of pitching and uh, trying to get a, a look at some of these guys, figure out who's the guy that's good in a jersey. Because sometimes guys uh, are better in t-shirts than they are in jerseys. And the only way to figure that out is to get them out there on a, in a game diamond. All right. How do you feel like guys have been approaching things in practice just because of the weight of expectations that will be on them after these first couple years are going to, I mean, people are still saying, oh, CBU's the new kid, you know, they tied the regular season title, they didn't win it outright. How do you feel like they're handling uh, things at practice? I think we're excited to play again, you know, I, just to, to get out there and compete. and um, You know, we get to go to some new places, and, you know, Texas Tech and Air Force, and we get to play at Blair Field and Long Beach State, and get to play uh, UW again at Washington. So there's enough excitement in there. The elephant in the room is, you know, you can't go to the postseason again. You can't go to the conference tournament again. But those are all negative thoughts. And so we try to just squash out those negative thoughts and focus on what we can do. And that's compete for another WAC title and have a great non-conference schedule with the UNLVs and the Hawaii's of the world as well. Um, you know, and, and that's really all we can control. And until we get through this transition, um, our goal remains the same. Let's try to win a WAC title. Um, the schedule wasn't affected last year by COVID. Um, are you guys at all worried about having to juggle some of these mid- midweek out of conference series to make up WAC series or how is the WAC handling that in baseball if it would occur? Yeah, to well, occur? We, we played four games in the WAC last year on the weekend. Now we're back down to three and we had that midweek. So all those schools I mentioned that we had in the midweeks present a new challenge. It's something we didn't do last year. 
and we just played on the weekend and had a week to prepare for the next opponent. Now you're looking at, you know, playing a weekend series and then maybe traveling to, you know, Vegas to play UNLV on a Tuesday or Bakersfield on a Tuesday. That'll present a different set of problems with travel in this class and making sure pitching and everybody stays healthy. So that's, but that's normal in Division One baseball. So they better get used to it because that's what it's going to be, you know, this year and, and beyond. Okay. So do you like the divisional play format or would you – would you – would you rather have a, a t chance to see the Texas schools? Um, um, hopefully I don't get in trouble for this. I don't like it at all. Uh, I, I uh, despise it. It's not my favorite. I want to you know, be able to play everybody in the league. I think those teams that we brought in will be good for baseball, could help the WAC maybe even turn into a two-bid conference league. I think there are plans in the mix to include those in other sports, um, you know, including baseball. So. I anxiously await to see those plans where we can, you know, play a quality opponent like Sam Houston State or Abilene Christian. But, you know, it goes back to I go full circle. I have no control over that schedule. I play the one put in front of me. It uh, doesn't matter what my opinion is. I just got to have the team ready to play on opening day. Um, we talk about this being the final year of the transition. When the record book is sealed on the transition, folks like myself remember the numbers. What will you remember most about this last, this four-year period, the final transition of CEBU baseball? I mean, you know, I remember the, the guys that, you know, helped us pave the way into the opportunity to be a, a Division I playoff contender. Uh, 